Are you thinking about taking an all-inclusive vacation or already have one planned and aren't quite sure what to expect? Then stay tuned because I'm going to share exactly what to expect on your first day at an all-inclusive resort. Hi, my name is Asai and welcome back to my channel. I'm a travel agent and the owner of Scenic Views Travel. And on this channel, I bring you resort reviews, tours, and travel tips and tricks. So you're going on an all-inclusive vacation and aren't quite sure what to expect on your first day? First of all, we're going to take it back a day or two prior to your trip and make sure that you take care of these three incredibly important things. First, if you have any known traveler numbers like TSA PreCheck or Global Entry, you need to make sure that these numbers are entered into your flight information at least 72 hours prior to your departure. This cannot be done at the airport and must be completed at least 72 hours in advance in order to receive your benefits. Number two, make sure you check in for your flights beginning 24 hours prior to your scheduled departure. You're also going to want to make sure that you download your airline's native app to your phone so that they can push notifications to you like any changes, delays, or cancellations. As an alternative, you can use a different app such as Flight Aware for some of that up-to-date flight information. In some cases, your airline app may also issue an electronic boarding pass, and this is a great way to have it at your fingertips. Number three, make sure you pack your passport and have it in your purse or the front pocket of your carry-on, not in your checked luggage, and keep it with you at all times. I don't know about you, but I probably check at least 15 times before I leave my house to make sure that I do have everybody's passports. As a side tip, I like to use a zippered pouch in order to keep everybody's documentation and passports in for our flights so that we don't lose or forget anything. I'm usually traveling as a family of four, and when we fly certain airlines like Southwest, they actually require and issue a paper boarding pass, which I also keep in this pouch along with our passports and any baggage claim tickets if we have checked any bags. Moving on, it's now the day of your vacation and you're ready to depart. The most important thing that you can do is make sure that you arrive at the airport at least three hours prior to your departure for international flights. In many cases, international flights require additional screening and check-in requirements like passport verification, and then also bag drop if you're checking any baggage prior to issuing your boarding pass. Also, most international flights begin the entire boarding process about 15 to 30 minutes earlier than domestic flights. Plus, the extra time allows for any security delays or any traffic. Okay, you've arrived at your destination. The next step will be going through immigration. Uh, you'll typically exit the plane and head down a long hallway or corridor and enter into the immigration hall. And at the immigration hall, there will be multiple different lines to go through immigration. And some will be through an actual person and some will be through a digital kiosk. In many cases, the lines are quite long, but I do assure you that they move quickly. This is where the country will be checking your entire party's passports and any visas if required. In addition, there are some countries that do require some sort of digital or paper immigration form to complete. You're going to want to make sure that if, if any of the countries that you are entering do require this kind of form, that you make sure it is done prior to departing from the U.S. if possible. Uh, this will ensure that you are on good Wi-Fi and can easily get it done versus in an international airport. Also, in immigration, sometimes biometric data like fingerprints or facial recognition may be collected, and you may be asked about your itinerary, accommodations, or other relevant information. Once they've cleared you, you are permitted to enter the country. From here, you'll move on to baggage claim, and you'll want to pick up your luggage. If you've carried on, you'll obviously skip this step. In some cases, after you pick up your bags, you may be pulled aside to have your luggage screened by customs just to ensure that nothing illegal is brought, being brought into the country. They do choose people at random, so don't be surprised if you are pulled for a baggage screening. 
After you receive your bags and finish with customs, if you've been pulled, you'll want to look for the airport terminal exit signage or something along the lines of ground transportation and follow the arrows. In some airports, I'm looking at you, Cancun Airport, you will find a hallway that has desks on either side full of representatives, basically trying to pull you into their desk, essentially to try and sell you something. This could be a timeshare or, hey, we'll take you on a tour and give you a free bottle of tequila. Or if you use our transfer, we'll give you $50 or something like that. My best tip for you is to just keep everyone in your party together, look straight ahead and walk like you know what you're doing. Worst case scenario, just say no thank you and keep on moving. Okay, now it's time to find your transfer. In many situations, you'll find your transfer or transportation company outside of the terminal either at a desk or standing around carrying a clipboard or a sign. Make sure you read your travel documents for your transfers because all of the major companies have a distinctive sign or are wearing something specific. You may need to look for a certain flowered shirt or a certain color or something like that, but either way, you'll need to look for and find the correct company that you've booked with. Once you've found your transfer, sit back and relax during your drive to your resort. You're on vacation. Some transfer companies may even provide you with water or beer or soft drinks and might even offer a shopping stop on your way to the resort. This is a great way to make a quick stop at the local Walmart or something and grab some sunscreen or any other items that you maybe didn't want to bring in your luggage. The time has come and now you've made it to your resort. Your transfer provider will drive through the security gate and verify your reservation and then they will drop you and your luggage off at the entrance. Please ensure that you tip your driver for all that they have done for you. I always recommend about $1 to $2 per bag at least. At this point, usually Bell Services will take your luggage for you and give you some sort of a luggage ticket to hold on to until your room is ready. You'll move on to the check-in desk, and sometimes this can be quite a long process depending on how many people are waiting in line and depending on how busy the resort is. So during check-in, at most resorts, you'll receive a nice cold towel for your hands and some sort of non-alcoholic welcome drink. At check-in, they will ask for those passports again, and they will verify all of the names and ages of everybody on the reservation. And if your resort does require a wristband, at this time, they will fit you and your entire party for your wristbands. The room may or may not be ready, hopefully it is. When it is ready, Bell Services should usually bring your luggage to your room. Either way, whether your room is ready or not, you are now an official guest of the resort and you are free to use any and all of its amenities. Okay, the very first thing that I recommend you do before you go to your room, before you do anything, is get some food. It's been a long travel day and most likely you're probably starving. Grab a cocktail, get some food, get some snacks, and enjoy the sunshine and warmth because your vacation has begun but sometimes not without issues or problems. My best tip that I can give to you in this entire video is to please pack your patient's pants. Take a deep breath and sleep on it. If you find that something is amiss during your trip, just sleep on it. As a travel agent, I have had calls and texts and messages about travel day problems. Maybe there is something wrong with the room. It's not the view you wanted. The bed is uncomfortable. The service is not very good. The drinks are watered down and the food is cold. But in most cases, if not all cases, this is always resolved with a good night's sleep. With any major issues, I always recommend that you speak with guest services. They are always going to be your best person to talk to about any issues with your resort, anything that you could need, or anything that you think is lacking from your vacation. And there you have it, a detailed look into what to expect on your first day at an all-inclusive resort. So pack your bags, leave your worries behind, and let the journey unfold. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and check out this video here, my top five all-inclusive luxury resorts in Mexico. Until next time, bye.